Hello and welcome to COVID Conversations here on WNCU 90.7 FM, streaming on YouTube, on Facebook and Instagram. I'm your host, Kimberly Pierce Cartwright. I'm the News and Public Affairs Director here at WNCU 90.7 FM. And, you know, we're always using the Zoom platform to talk about how COVID-19 is affecting our world. Now, I have a little script I want to read for you. After a year and a half of focusing solely on children, parents are deciding how they're going to get their kids back into classrooms. But the Delta variant is making this already stressful time more stressful than ever before, giving parents a lot more that they have to navigate. My guest today says the silver lining in going back to school means finally giving parents a chance to focus on themselves, something they likely put on the back burner since the start of the pandemic. Now, um, what is self-care? And where do parents start in that process? Here to talk to me today about this is Shannon Shern. Now, she is the Director of Lifestyle Intervention, and she is the co-founder of Relish Life. Hello, Shannon, and welcome to COVID Conversations. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Oh, you are so welcome. And when I, I saw the information about what it is that you do, I, I was um, just very curious about how we could do a show about what you do, yeah. Relish. So um, I want you to ask you, first of all, about self-care. What What is self-care? It seems like, you know, it can be a big thing or, or a little thing. What is it? And how can people apply self-care to their lives within that broad spectrum? I think you, you touched on two things actually there with that question. There's um, self-care can kind of come up as this eye rolling topic where it's like, yeah, of course I need self-care, but like, how am I going to do that? Right. So what you can think of it as two parts, right? So in one way, there is no one thing that is self-care. It is just how you speak to yourself, how you lead your life, how you allow yourself to move through life and enjoy all the good stuff amidst the chaos, right? So I would say for small things, I would start with just that inner dialogue, starting to notice those times when you're judging yourself for, for not being the best, for not doing the, the best, for not being on time for drop off or for forgetting your kid's lunch. Um, all of those things, we can start to get really hard on ourselves and we can really make those this huge deal and priority in our lives. So just reminding yourself, you know, this is life. Life is crazy. I may not do all the things all the time, but it's important to take care of myself, speak kindly to myself and do the things that feel good in each little moment. So not so much finding one time, but what can I do right now that will feel good right in this moment, not in the future, not in the past, just right now. So focusing on now, I think is the first thing that you can do. And then your second question, what are some big things that you can do? I would say going into your life and finding those pockets of time where you can dedicate things to yourself. So reminding yourself life is different now in a pandemic, now that you're a parent, all of those things are huge transformation. So we don't want to try to get back to what used to work for us, that whole bounce back idea. Just get rid of that and start thinking, let's bounce forward. How can I be better than I was before? And how can I make this work in a way where when life's throwing curveballs, it's still going to fit in. So little things like five minutes are better than no minutes of exercise. Um, eating something healthy along with the comfort food that you're eating to give yourself nutrients. Those are huge for your health. And they're not taking things away from your life, time or delicious foods. They're adding to your life, health and happiness and self-care. So you can feel successful all the time. Okay. Okay. Next question is, if, if you are a parent with children during COVID, mm. some of the things that cause stress that are stirred up in the mix of everyday life? Masks, I would say, is number one, right? Like whether your kids 
will or will not wear them. Sometimes that's even the struggle. Um, whether where they're going will make them wear masks or not make them wear masks. Should I make them wear masks, even if other people are not making them wear masks? You know, what's right and how do I do the best for my child? There's so much information out there that it is scary and overwhelming. So to give a tip on that, you know, make sure uh, along with that inner dialogue, trust yourself. So you can take in all the information, but trust yourself to make the decision that feels good for you and your family. And then, you know, with back to school, it's just lunches, cleanup, laundry, all that stuff is back again, waking up early, you know, it's back. I, I don't have children, so I'm, I'm only imagining how much of chaos there is involved yeah. in trying to keep that plot, uh, that process fluid and moving. Right in and out of, of days and days and days. So yeah. what are um, what is one of the biggest results of stress during COVID-19? So we are all in this state of post-traumatic stress right now. So we're all remembering last summer and how hard that was for us. Is school going to open? Um, is my loved one going to get sick? Uh, is um, well, there's the fires and all of the, the natural stuff happening. I mean, we are in the exact same position uh, and, and we didn't think we would be here. And so we're, we're having these flashbacks. Oh my God, the trauma of last year is back. And, and how do I deal with that? And is this going to be forever? And now, you know, it's compounded and worse. So we are in this state of chronic stress right now, and we have been for a long time. So our brains are actually affected and changing with the release of the dopamine that we're used to getting um, just in daily life to help us feel good. We're stressed out. So we're turning to food. We talked about that earlier, right? Uh, off the air, we're turning to alcohol. You know, we're turning to things to help us just feel better. And so we're kind Kind of in these unhealthy things waiting for the time where we can make healthy choices and what we need to do is say you know what this is life how can i make it work for me and and be okay so look shannon one of my friends told me the other day that he gained 40 pounds during lockdown on covid and he was really eating good. So what are some of, of uh, the healthy habits that um, people can use to address um, weight gain and related stress during mm -hmm. it? So, I mean, that has, uh, again, multiple um, factors. I mean, 41% of the population have, um, it says, they say they've gained between 30 and 50 pounds just like your friend, right? There's the stress baking, the stress eating, all of that, the drinking at night. Um, so we are in this place where we can make some healthy changes now. We can't wait until later because our health is now at risk. So um, like I was talking about earlier, things like we can't fit everything we wanna do into this chaos. So what are small changes we can make to add some health to our life? Going for walks, don't discount walks. Five minutes of exercise while the water boils, some push-ups against the counter, some lunges, you know, that's gonna build strength. It's gonna get your heart rate up. And those are all really good for you. Being healthy isn't one thing. It's not getting to the gym. It's not eating salads. It's a whole lifestyle. So it's how you speak to yourself. It's how you get active during the day, not workouts, but getting active consistently. It's about eating healthy foods, not giving up the things you love. So it's really important to just focus small things at a time. Um, I think it's going to be the biggest key. So I think that, that rolls into the question that I was going to ask you next about um, sustainability. Yeah. So I can go and do like a couple of push-ups on the counter, but yeah. I'll do it tomorrow, then, you know, there goes right. push-ups against the counter. So sure. what, what can people use to, to be accountable to themselves? A chart, a journal, mm -hmm. uh, to change your mindset. So what are some, some tools that people can use to be able to do that? 
Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, and that's a lot of what we do at Relish Life. We have a lot of um, resources and people there to help keep you accountable. So a, a buddy that you can do all this with, making a checklist of the things you want to do more of to remind yourself, get out for a walk every day, drink 60 ounces of water every day. <laughs> um, you know, pick five, right? Just five things, small things, um, eat vegetables in at least two meals, right? So make those little check marks that you can do that are easy and attainable, you know, set that bar lower than what we think health is. Don't make too many changes that are going to be a whole different lifestyle. Otherwise, then we're back to that flip-flopping. We've got our chaos life when we just eat comfort food, and then we have the routines. And routines are bad. We need habits because those will stick with us through chaos. Routines, they'll go right out the window as soon as the in-laws come to town, as soon as there's a pandemic, as soon as we're on vacation. So um, really, really taking into account sustainability means I got to do it all the time and feel good about it. So will you give us some other tips about how to get moving? Mm. But, um, people are moving around a little bit more. We use our masks. We go out, out to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. We don't have time for, say, 30-minute workout or, or 60, 45, whatever it is that you think you would need to do to maintain your healthy lifestyle. Some, some tips just to try to get some more work in. Yeah. Um, again, every day, you know, if you just do 10 minutes a day, that's going to be a whole lot better than the occasional 30 minutes or even the occasional five minutes right against the counter. So doing it daily and whatever that means is working for you. So you can park farther away from the grocery store and that gives you maybe an extra five minute walk um, and add that to parking farther away from school pickup. And that adds another five minutes. So how can I get in 20 minutes, even if it's not all at once? Maybe there's five minutes before my next phone call. So I'll, I'll walk around the block and get back here or, or take your call as you're walking around the block. Um, all of those things, the more you start to think about it and be mindful, what can I do right now? the more you'll find those little pockets of time where you can feel feel good about the choices that you can make. So um, I know that you've had your own personal stressors um, when you were working on your own weight struggles. And then I read in the information that you sent me that you can have um, treats, like when you're trying to lose weight. And yes. it just seemed really extravagant to me that you suggested that we have treats like wine and chocolate mm -hmm. while we're trying to get through all of the, these stressors and lose weight and, and, and have a, a better sustainable health life. Right. I just, I just thought it was just super over, over indulgent. Help me. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> so as soon as you can get that balance, like you're in it, you're in a healthy lifestyle <laughs> And it's really about using those things that you love and you don't want to take away from your life. Being healthy isn't taking away sugar and alcohol and time from your life. It's about adding to your life. So I love to make this naughty and nice list. So we've got the things that I love to do that I know are not super healthy. And then I've got the things that I love to do that or that I know I should be doing. And I kind of like them. So that's probably workouts drinking water, you know, those things you forget to do consistently. So on one list, you've got maybe some wine at night, take something off of the, the nice list where you say, okay, I can have that glass of wine if I get in a workout today. So only when you have the workout, can you have that glass of wine? It's not a reward. It's using that glass of wine that you probably will have anyway, to add something healthy to your day. So for me, sometimes it's like, oh man, I really want a glass of wine. I haven't worked out today. I could just do some five minutes of push-ups, some squats, and then I can count that as a workout so I can have that glass of wine. And it's something I wouldn't have done if I didn't have that little treat that I was going to already have anyway, let's be honest. Um, same thing for, co for chocolate. You know, if I get vegetables into my meal, I can have a square of chocolate after that meal. If I don't, no chocolate. So it's, it's finding those ways to add health 
because of the things that you love instead of giving up the things that you love. Okay, we're running a little bit low on time. So would you give information about what you do at Relish and maybe, you know, offer a way for people to get more information? Yeah, at Relish, we are so excited to have started this. Um, It's just my passion project for the last 10 years. And I'm so excited right now to really bring it to the world. And what we do is we solve the root cause of the weight gain um, and and that need for food and um, not getting active, you know, all of those things that keep us from being healthy. We solve that by addressing what's happening in our mindset. You know, we look at those things as everybody knows that they should eat more vegetables and go for walks and work out, right? You're just not doing it. So when you, when you work with us, we have counselors and therapists, we have medications that help with depression, anxiety, and even that addictive center that needs that dopamine from the foods. We have a personal health coach that meets with you once a week to help make sure that you're feeling good and staying on track. We have doctors to make sure that you're feeling good if you're on the medications. So we've got a whole team to support you in this transformation from wanting to bounce back to learning how to bounce forward and, and enjoy not the chaos, pandemic. You can't enjoy it, but enjoy life amidst the chaos. So for additional information. Oh yeah. Uh, www.relish.life. Um, no.com after that, just <laughs> relish.life. And there's tons of info there. Okay. You've given us some really good things to think about today, Shannon. Thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome. And we've been talking to um, Shannon Shern, Director of Lifestyle Intervention and co-founder of Relish Life. Again, thank you so much. And so much audience for watching us via YouTube, on Facebook and Instagram as well as listening to us on WNCU 90.7 FM. We want you to follow us and subscribe to our pages to see more of our archive shows. I'm Kimberly Pierce Cartwright. You've been listening to Conversations here on WNCU 90.7 FM.